In this video, I'll talk about four key strategies to debug your tags. Errors, the vital checks, some proxy tricks, and advanced table evaluations. No further ado, let's get started. Let's just talk about errors. Now, when errors happen in DAX calculations, they often happen because of two main reasons while you're writing formulas. Let's just take an example and take a look at this. So let's just say that I am writing a test measure. I'm gonna call this as test. And let's just start to use a filter function. So if I happen to write a filter function, you're gonna see that the filter function is explicitly asking you a few arguments in the function. The first part of the formula is a table, and the second part of the formula is a filtered expression. Now, when you're inputting these arguments in the function, you have to match the argument type that it is asking for. So in case in the first part of the formula, you happen to write anything other than a table. That means it does not evaluate to a table. Table simply means rows and columns. If it doesn't evaluate to a table, it is going to give you an error. Similarly, in the second part of the formula, if the expression or the calculation doesn't evaluate to a true and false output, again, it is going to give you an error. So whenever you're writing these DAX calculations, be sure to read what the formula is asking you for. In our case, the formula was asking us for a table and a filtered expression. In case we do not provide those arguments just as the way that they're being asked for, our formula is going to return an error. The second most common reason why people get errors in their formulas is because people don't understand that measures should evaluate to single expressions or single values and tables should not evaluate to single expressions, they should evaluate to a table. Let me help you understand. So while I was creating this measure, note that I created a measure, I did not create a table. So while I was creating this measure, whatever DAX that I happen to write in the code box, this has to evaluate to a single value. If it doesn't evaluate to a single value, it is going to give me an error. So at the moment, I have written a filter function. The filter function by itself is a, is a correct uh, formula that I've written. So I'm saying go in every single row of the calendar table, calculate total sales and find out if the total sales is more than 100 or not. This is actually giving you a true or a false output. This is a table, so this all fits well. The formula is correct, but if I happen to press enter, this is going to give me an error because the filter function cannot return a single value. This formula is going to evaluate to a table where the filtered rows are retained. Whenever you're writing measures, be sure that your measures are evaluating to a single output. What do I mean by that? Now. Six. Single output means a single number. So let's just say that I want to count the number of rows in this particular table. So I can just maybe say count rows. It is asking for a table. Filter actually provides a table and I can just maybe feed in that and close the bracket in the end. And now this filter function is now become a feeder function to the count rows function and the count rows is going to give me a single value output and, and then it makes the formula actually work. So remember, measures should return single values and tables should not return single values. They should be evaluated as tables. If you're creating a table, then it should return a table. If you're creating a measure, then it should return a single value. Moving on to point number two, some vital checks that you should must perform if your DAX calculations are not performing the way that you expect them to. Take a look at this particular example. The first one that I'm going to talk about is please do check the fields, which table are they coming from when you're using them in your visuals. Take a look. So. I have this simple pivot table. We, we have the region, sorry, we have the year, we have the region, we have the total sales. And everything seems fine, but it's just that the region is seeming awkward. There is dot, 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 or dash, 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 and then there is some sales against it. But I don't really want to see that. So let's just investigate why is this happening. So, so I happen to click on the visual, and then I can see the fields right here. And if I happen to just go over to the region, you can see that the region is actually coming from the sales table and not my dimension table, right? So let's just go take a look at this very table, and let's just see that do you have dots over there or not? So I'm going to go over to my sales table. In the sales table, you're going to see that we have region, and in the region, you're going to see that we do have these three dots. But I remember that I created a dimension table for the regions and I did replace the dot, dot, dot with New Delhi, right? So I made a mistake while I was dragging the regions not to use this particular column, but use the regions column in my sales table. So if I just go back to my visual and if I happen to click on the visual and if I happen to just replace this particular region with the corrected region, I am going to start to see the right results, drag that, and expand that, this is all good, it is seeming right. The next thing that I would urge you to check is that if relationships are formed correctly between the tables or not. Although we did replace the region correctly from our dimension table, but you're gonna see that the sales are seeming to be weird. So we have 18,000 all across, 
and 30,000 all across, this is not getting filtered. So let's just go take a look at our relationship. Now that the columns are correct, let's just go take a look at the relationships. I'm just going to go over to the model view right here. In the model view, you're going to take a look at the regions and the regions is actually not even linked with my sales table. So I'm going to have to link that and that's when this particular column is going to start to get filtered through that particular relationship that we have created. So I will take that region column, link it with this particular region, region column. That's a one-to-many relationship. And now this particular column should start to get filtered. If I go take a look, this starts to show me the correct values. The other vital check that you should definitely perform if the calculation is looking a bit weird is please take a look at any filters that are coming off from the current page or not. So you can see that the sales is seeming very low for the entire year. It's nowhere close to what I would expect it to be. But I want to take a look at what's going on. I mean, this seems to be correct. There is no filter, no slicer on the page. So what's going on? The very first thing that you can do is you can actually click on the visual and you can actually hover your mouse on top of this visual. And you're going to see that our sales is actually filtered by channel equals to organic. But on the screen, nowhere I'm able to see any kind of filter, slicer, or in the pivot table right here. Even if I happen to take a look at the filters menu right here, there is no, no filter that is selected right here for the channel. Even if my total sales calculation is checked, I don't even have any kind of filters in my total sales calculation. So where exactly is this filters? A lot of times while designing a dashboard, you might have hidden the filters or they would have gotten hidden in case you're using any type of special visualization technique, a bookmark or something, and that's where the filters might come from. Now, I'll show you what I did. So I actually went over to the format tab. In the format tab, I have the selection menu right here. And in the selection menu, I on purpose hid this particular slicer that was applied and that actually showed the channel equals to organic. Now, in case you are still not able to find any kind of weird filters that are actually filtering your calculation, what I would recommend is that you copy this particular table, control C on that, and you make a new page and you paste that table on that new page. And now, because there are no filters on this particular page, you should start to see unfiltered calculation and you can verify that if these calculations are right or not. The next vital check, which I almost always do it with simple and advanced calculations is the three stage tax calculation process. Now you've done all the checks, everything seems to be fine, no errors, but you still don't trust the calculation and you wanna verify the calculation. What I'd highly recommend is that you run the three stage tax calculation process. Stage number one is that you pick up the filters which are actually filtering your visual right here. So for the value 21, which is the number of unique days in a month that you sold any kind of product, it's 21. I want to verify this calculation. So you pick up the filters, which is the year filter and the month filter, and you physically apply that on the data. So I'm going to actually go ahead to my sales table and actually I'm going to apply this particular filter. So you can take this table to your Excel or you can apply it right here, however you want it. But I will apply those two filters, year equals to 2011 and the month equals to January. So I can maybe actually create two new columns right here. These are just test columns that I'm creating. Please don't hammer me down on that. So I'm going to say that this is going to be my year and I'll say that this is going to be the year function of the sales table and the date. And then I'm also going to apply a concatenation here. I'm going to say, hey, actually, let's just go ahead and write the format function. And I'm going to say, hey, why don't we format the sales date column and then I would want to have YYYY and then dash MMM and that is actually going to give, give me my year and the month. So now I'll apply the 2011 Jan filter which is right here. Click on OK and we're left with these many rows. Now if I happen to do a distinct count of all of these dates, so if I just sort it in the ascending order, happen to click on this particular column, you're going to see that if I click on this column, I get to see 21 filtered values as a distinct count of this particular column and that actually checks my answer. So the first stage of the calculation was pick up the filters, apply to your data, once the data is filtered, then you run your DAX calculation and that's the number that you're seeing right here. If you're enjoying the video thus far, then you're absolutely going to love my courses on Power BI. I have courses on DAX, modeling, Power Query and the M language. I'd highly recommend that you check out these courses. If you're a beginner and you would like to get more advanced, start solving more difficult, more challenging problems, even of your own data, try to understand the logic and then frame the solution by yourself. I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. These are extremely structured courses. I go step by step, talk about the basics first, then layer the complexity one after the other and take you to a more advanced level. There are hundreds of students who have joined my courses and I have got some amazing feedback from all of those students. If you consider joining my course, the link is going to be down in the description of the video. 
Let's get back. Now let's just take a look at a few proxy tricks that I often apply to take a look at whether the closely related calculation is still giving me the right output or an expected output or not. And that's how I would debug the calculations. You will understand once you take a look at my technique. So I'm working with a simple pivot table again. So year and the month are coming from the calendar table. Against that I have total sales. Now the total sales for the month is 1200 approximately dollars. And I'd like to find out that what's the sales of the three best selling products. So for which I'm going to write a measure. So I'll just say, hey, uh, right click sales, maybe I'll write a total sales measure. So total, I'm going to call this as top product sales. I'm going to write a top end function for that. So I'll say, hey, I want to find out the three best selling products and the granularity at which I would like to do the calculation is the products cal is the products table. So at the product level, find out the total sales and then rank them in the top three order. And then the order of calculation is nothing but my total sales, close the bracket. Now at the moment, the top end function is going to give me a table, but I don't really want to return a table here. I want to return a calculation for these top three products. And what's my calculation? I'm going to use maybe the calculate function and I'll say, hey, why don't you calculate total sales? And then here is your filter against which you have to calculate total sales, close the bracket, press enter, and that should give me the right answer. Now, once I drag this calculation over to my visual, I will sure enough get to see some number, but I'm not convinced that this is the right number. So I want to take a look at that if this is actually the right number or not. So what you can do is you can actually run proxy calculation. So what I'm going to do is instead of actually finding out total sales, let me just go ahead and find out that how many rows are being considered in the sales table so that I can actually go ahead and verify those rows in the sales table. So I can just go back to my calculation and I can say that instead of doing the total sales calculation, which is a big calculation by itself, why don't I run a simpler calculation or a closely related calculation, which is let's say the count of the sales table rows. So I'll say, hey, why don't you just do a count rows function? And in the count rows function, I will say, hey, why don't you just count the number of rows in the sales table? Close the bracket, press enter. And this actually gives you a value of nine in the first filter context. So here, where you were taking a look at some $600, now you're able to see nine rows. That means now I can at least go ahead and verify that are there actually nine rows of data in the sales table that is returning that number nine and eventually that number of 600 something dollars that was the top sales. Let's just go verify that as well. I've copied the data into Excel and that's my sales data. From this data, I will start to make a pivot table and try to get that number nine. Am I still getting that number nine or not? So I will maybe create a pivot table, press enter, table one, good to go on the next sheet. And this is where I will start to create a few fields. So date column dragged right here because we had a date filter. So that's good. And then we also had a product ID filter uh, and we are going to place total sales against that. And that is giving me this number, right click. And I'll say that I want to expand that, expand it. And I want to expand January because we were just taking a look at the number for January. So I'll expand that as well. So expand that and the, here are all my products. Now, first of all, I will sort the products in the descending order because I want to take a look at top three only. So right click and I'll say that I would like to sort it in the descending order. That's what I have. And now these three products, which are presumably the top three products, should give me a total of nine rows of data in the sales table. So if I just happen to drag any column and change the calculation or aggregation to count, you're going to see that this actually adds up to nine rows. Six plus two plus one is nine. Now, even if you're not able to validate the total sales calculation, you have validated a proxy calculation, which is actually leading up to total sales. That means at least this is right. That means the total sales filter that we created using the top end function was working correctly. The next thing that I will highly recommend you to do is stage your calculations in variables because variables allow you to store the calculation once and then retrieve that intermediate result onto your visualization. So if I had to rewrite this particular calculation, I'm going to maybe declare a variable and I'll say, hey, there is a filter that I have created, which is this particular filter. So I will just move this filter up and I will call this, let's say top three product filter or top three product table. And that is going to be my top end calculation. Now this particular calculation will start to filter my total sales and I'm just going to maybe write return. And then I'll say, Hey, I want to return total sales, but the filter that I would like to use is nothing but the top three product table filter. Now you might ask that how would that actually help? The answer happens to be the same. Now, in case you have declared this as a separate filter, what I can just do is I can use this at any point in time and call this out in my calculation. So instead of doing this particular thing, I can just go ahead and say that I want to count the number of rows in the filter that I have created, which is this particular filter. Now, because this is a product level filter, 
this should actually give me three rows of data because top three rows in the products table against total sales should actually give you three products unless there is a tie. So if I happen to press enter, you're gonna see that here I do get those three products. Here I get to see four products because there might be a tie, three products, three products, three products, so on and so forth. So variables actually allow you to stage the calculations and retrieve any variable out in case you wanna test that variable very, very conveniently. My last set of debugging trick is evaluating the table itself. A lot of times you're gonna create a table and you would wanna evaluate how the table is looking like in your filter context. So let's just go take a look at the same uh, visual that we were working with. And this top product sales calculation, we happen to write this particular measure, which is where we created a, this particular table. And against this table, we were running a couple of calculations. But at the moment, we have been using proxy calculations to validate the results. We have been not been able to take a look at this table as to how this table is being created. How many rows are there? What's the data of the rows? And what are the columns of this particular table? So let's just go ahead and evaluate this table. Now we have a new DAX query view. It's not so new, but there is a newish uh, DAX query view, which is where you can evaluate table. So let's just go ahead and copy this particular calculation. This is leading us to a table. The answer for this calculation is a table and therefore we can evaluate. So I can just go ahead in the query view. After the evaluate statement, I can write anything that results in a table. And I know that the top end function will return me a table. I will click on run and that's the table that I get. The only problem that you're going to get in the query view is that this table is going to be without any filter context. And at the moment, if I just go ahead and take a look at my visual, I had a filter context, at least for the first calculation, as Jan 2011. So you'd not be able to take a look at the table which is being evaluated here, or here, or here, or here. So let's just go ahead and evaluate this particular table, which is where the filter context is Feb and year of 2011. Let's just see that do we actually get four rows or not? So how do we take this filter context? What we'll have to do is we'll have to wrap this top end function in the calculate table function to apply those filters manually. I'll show you. So I'm gonna go ahead and happen to write the calculate table function. In the calculate table function, the first part is a table, good to go. This is my table. And then I'm gonna go ahead and write my filter. So my first filter is the calendar year, should be equal to 2011, so 2011. And the second filter is going to be the calendar month is equals to the month of Feb. I'm gonna close that particular formula. So two filters, this particular thing, it should actually return me four rows because that's what I take a look at. So if I just now click on run, you can see that it actually gives me four rows of data and there would be a tie in this. Now, at the moment, I am getting the top three products evaluated by total sales, but it's just evaluating it I can't really see the total sales. So to enhance this particular calculation, what you can also do is you can add columns to this and you can add more calculations, the calculations that you would wanna see. How do you do that? So the add columns function. So I can say that I would like to add a couple of columns to this particular table. Let's just say that the first column that I'm trying to add is nothing but my total sales, so TS for that. And then the, we have a measure called total sales right here. I'm just gonna select that, close the bracket, put in a comma here. Now this table is enhanced by one additional column, which is total sales. And you should start to see that column right here after I click on run. And now you can see that there do happens to be a tie. So 135, 135 was tied. And therefore we were getting four rows of data and not three rows of data. Similarly, I can add maybe one more column, which is maybe the count. So I can say this is going to be the count and this is going to be the count rows, so count, rows of the sales table, close that bracket. And uh, yeah, good to go, click on run. And you can see that it gives me 19, 19, 19 and nine. The actual total count was nine and not 19. So what's going on? So the problem is that we have not applied context transition here. If you do not know what context transition is, I will highly recommend that you take a look at multiple videos that I have done on context transition. But for now, if I want to take this filter, and apply it to this particular calculation, then I have to wrap this around in the calculate function to initiate the filter. And now if I have to run this, you're gonna see that this actually will show me the right answer.